Hello there. What is going on everybody today? We're going to be taking a look at Unmatched. Now this is going to be a review of actually three different parts of Unmatched. We've got our core game Unmatched Battle of Legends Volume 1 as well as the Robin Hood and Bigfoot expansion as well as the Bruce Lee expansion. We're going to be looking at all of these uh, and I'm going to bring to you my thoughts and I do want to also caveat this with this was all sent to me by Restoration Games and Mondo Games. This was a review copy, so I did not purchase this. However, um, it doesn't mean that my review is going to be tainted by that, but I thought it was important to let you know. Now, this was actually brought to my attention from a lot of you viewers and commenters uh, that, you know, hey, here's a game you might be interested in. So if you are new to the channel, I do a lot of miniature game reviews here as a lot of stuff, especially Star Wars gaming, because there are a lot of Star Wars miniatures games currently out there, especially games by Fantasy Flight Games. But one of my favorite Star Wars miniatures games, it's certainly a classic game, was Star Wars Epic Duels. And Restoration Games has kind of like gone back and evoked a lot of what Star Wars Epic Duels was and kind of expanded on it without it necessarily being Star Wars uh, and also kind of refined it a little bit with Unmatched. This is a new system where you can just add more and more stuff to it. So more expansions. This is definitely an expandable game, but it's not required that you get the expansion. So we're going to take a look at this. Also, if you are new here, there's a new giveaway going on right now for a $25 Amazon gift card. There's still time left to enter to win that. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. It's as simple as that. But we're going to uh, show you how to play this game and I'll bring you my thoughts. So this is just a sample game set up. We have King Arthur facing off against Medusa. King Arthur has the companion Merlin. And of course, companions in this game are going to be designated by these discs. Uh, now, Medusa happens to have three harpies. So she's got three discs, whereas King Arthur only has one. Uh, there are characters in this game that don't have any companions at all. But in the case that uh, you do have a companion, you're going to note if you have mo more than one, they're only going to have one hit point each. Although if you have only one, they're going to have their own hit point dial. So Merlin has seven hit points, where King Arthur actually has uh, 18. And of course, the little arrow down at the top is going to dictate their starting health. Uh, if we go higher, I'd be wrapping all the way back around to zero. So a pretty standard little health dial, whereas uh, you see Medusa only has the one dial, she has 16 health, and has no dials for her harpies because they all have one hit point each. Now, uh, each character is going to have their, their miniature, their sidekicks, they're going to have a deck of cards, so Medusa is going to have a deck of cards, which you will shuffle and then draw five to start you out. You have a hand limit of seven, and then you are also going to have your helper card. Now this is gonna have basically the basic three things you can do on your turn. Uh, you've got two different actions you can take and they can be uh, maneuver, attack, or scheme. And uh, on the other side is going to be all the special information about your particular character. Whether you are a ranged attack or melee attack, uh, your sidekicks if they're ranged attack or melee attack, as well as a reminder for your health starting, uh, any special abilities are, that you have, and your movement value, which is going to be on that card. If you'll notice, uh, Medusa has a starting movement value of three, whereas King Arthur has a starting movement value of two. We're going to talk about the different actions that you can perform, uh, but you're going to be going back and forth until you defeat the enemy's champion, which is going to be their main character or their miniature. Uh, if you if their sidekicks are left standing, they you, they still lose. But basically, this is a straight-up Battle Royale, Super Smash Brothers, Legend, right? Something like that. Uh, you're trying to just kill your opponent's fighter. And in a multiplayer game, you're trying to be the last, uh, last champion standing. The uh, decks of cards, because they're all pretty much the same basic design in that there's uh, certain things we need to look at on each of the cards. So... Uh, let me start with this particular one. Actually, this is a very powerful card. Uh, but the first thing we're going to look at is uh, the top, uh, this section up here. First off, is going to say who can play it. Uh, this is part of Medusa's deck, but Medusa also has harpies. And so if you wanted to attack, you're going to be able to only, you know, if you're going to play this card, Medusa is the one that has to play it. Um, and this is going to be an attack symbol, and this is going to be the attack value. So if you were to attack with this card, you would be attacking with a strength of two. Um, then at the bottom here, you're going to have an additional ability. So if you do play this card to attack after combat, you're going to follow whatever it says. So in this case, if you won, you'd deal eight addition, additional damage to an opposing fighter. So um, this is a, you know, like a, a weaker attack, but if it hits, it's going to hit really, really strong. So basically, if they don't defend against it, 
that's what's gonna happen. We'll talk a little bit about attack in a moment. But there's also another part on a card. And this is the boost value over here. And this is a, uh, something that you can do. You can discard a card when you're moving to gain its boost value. And we're gonna reference that on other cards. And a lot of other cards will have different boost values. Four is actually exceptionally high. Most boost values are one, uh, between one and three. And you have one, a two, and a three right there. Um, so that's what an attack card looks like. There's defense cards. Uh, which are going to be blue, and that's something when you're being attacked, you'll be able to discard a defense card. But again, this would only work if Medusa was being attacked. Uh, if one of the Harpies were being attacked, uh, you wouldn't be able to discard that. There are also purple cards. These can be used as attack or defense. It's your choice whenever you want to play them. So these are a lot more versatile and a lot more, you know, you know, uh, effective. Uh, this one happens to be Harpy, so Medusa can't use this one to attack or defend. And one of the things that that's relevant as for is if, for example, all of the Harpies are killed, then Medusa really has no use for this card other than to discard it for extra movement. Uh, there are also certain cards that are going to say any on the side, and that can be Medusa or the Harpies. Now, these are definitely the most uh, versatile because this one happens to be both any and purple, so it can be used for a variety of things. Uh, so that's cool. And then there's also one other thing that you can do, uh, and that is going to be to scheme, and that is this particular uh, symbol here. This is reference to the scheme ability, and that's one of the actions you can take on your turn. You can basically move, you can attack, and you can scheme. And if you scheme, you're just going to basically discard this card and do whatever it says. Schemes tend to be very, very powerful uh, in, in, in warrants an entire action, whereas there are also text usually after attacks but they usually aren't as powerful as schemes. Like a regular attacks special effect might let you draw a card or have somebody discard a card, but this one's going to do, schemes tend to do a lot more. Also, if it's a scheme that does damage, it's not considered an attack, so schemes are a whole different way that you can play, and that's um, not really a different way you can play, but a, you know a different approach that you can make. Instead of attacking, you might cast a spell or do something different, and that's kind of what schemes so on my turn, if I'm playing Medusa, I want to reference my movement value of three. Uh, one thing I could do is I could move. Now, if I'm going to move, uh, I will first draw a card. Now, keep in mind you got a hand limit of seven, uh, but I, I'll draw a card first because I could always discard this card to also add its boost value to my movement. So while my movement is three, I could also then turn around and immediately discard this card and have a movement value of five which is very nice. Now, if I'm going to do that, uh, you know, I could, let's just say I did that and I'd have, now have movement value of five. I can move Medusa, one, two, three, uh, four, five, something like that, perhaps. Now, I have to follow the lines. I can move through friendly units, but I cannot move through enemy units. And of course, I cannot end my movement on an occupied uh, uh, space. But now, after I move, I can also move my uh, my my companions, and so that's actually really cool. My sidekicks can move with me. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. You know, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. And so that was an example of movement. Now I don't have to discard the card. I say I don't have to move at all. But when I take a movement action, I need to at least draw one card. And that's definitely the most important thing because sometimes you won't move at all and you'll just draw and still count that as your maneuver. So that's uh, basically how maneuvers work. Now, I do want to talk about the different squares here. For example, uh, since ranged attacks can attack anybody that's in the same area, so Medusa coming in here into the blue can now attack Arthur, but he's melee and he can only attack somebody who's adjacent to him. So he would now have to move if he wanted to be able to attack Medusa, but she, as a ranged fighter, can now attack him from safety. Um, however, if she were in a, a place like this, uh, well, this particular area is both pink and sand colored, so she would actually be able to attack anybody in all of the pink and anybody in all of the sand. Over here you have a section that's got all three, and this is actually uh, counted as being in all three different zones. So this is actually like a really good vantage point for somebody who's a ranged fighter to kind of end right here because now they can attack uh, a very, very wide variety of targets. And so that's, you know, kind of one of the strategies for ranged characters is they, this is kind of representing them getting up high and trying to have the high ground. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi reference, of course. Um, so that's kind of why you want to move around because different areas might represent safety. Like Arthur could just move back one and now be safe from Medusa's attacks, but necessarily not from these harpies, for example. Although the harpies do have melee range only. So this one, while she is adjacent to him, 
would, would be able to attack, but this one would not. So let's talk about attacking. So let's say Medusa is going to attack King Arthur. She's going to use a ranged attack because if we reference again her, her, her card, she's ranged and her harpies are melee. Now when we're going to attack, we're going to choose who attacks. And I can only pick one character to attack. So my Medusa can attack or I can pick one harpy to attack. But in this case, let's just say I want to have Medusa attack. Uh, you have to choose who's attacking, who's defending. So I could attack Merlin or I could attack Arthur. But I kind of want to go for Arthur a little bit more. Even though he's got more health, uh, by killing him I would actually win. So uh, that's basically what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to take my Medusa card here. Uh, and this is an any card. And so I'm going to use this one to attack with a value of 3. And if it's uh, unopposed, that means it would do 3 damage to Arthur. It also happens to have an after combat ability. So we're going to uh, lay that face down. I say I am attacking Arthur. And I declare that as one of my actions. Uh, then uh, Arthur, the Arthur player, can choose to defend or not. And what they'll have to do is they'll have to look through the card. If they have a card that Arthur can use, um, like Arthur could use this card to defend, uh, and this would absorb one. They could use an any to defend, and any to absorb two. Um, they wouldn't be able to use this one because this one's a Merlin card specifically. So, uh, so that would only be useful if he was if Merlin was being attacked. And so, that's kind of how this is going to work. So let's just say I happen to play this particular card. It's in any, and I can use it as either attack or defense. So then I would lay that card face down, and unless we're both locked in, then we're going to flip over both cards. Um, so uh, this would mean that I had three to one, so I'm actually going to win, but he's going to reduce my damage by two. So it's always nice to defend if you have the cards, because you're probably at least going to reduce the damage if you don't stop the attack completely. And uh, But since I did deal damage, that's going to count as me having won the combat. Um, if I dealt no damage, then the defender would have won the combat. And then we have uh, after combat abilities. Now, if there's ever a tie on uh, whenever these go off, it's going to go on the, uh, the attacking player first. So in my case, after combat, I can draw a card. So I'll be able to get another card in my hand, which is great because cards are a commodity. You're going to be using cards for movement. You're going to be using cards to attack, and you're going to run out of cards. And if you're attacking, then it means you're not moving, so you're going to start running out of cards. So um, you know, drawing cards is important. Uh, and then we'll also get to use the text here for after combat, draw a card. If you won the combat, draw two cards instead. So uh, that's nice, although it's pretty hard to win uh, a con you know a combat with only a one. Um, but yeah, so uh, but if you know if you somehow manage to, then you get to draw extra cards. Uh, and that's uh, basically how attacking works. Uh, however much damage in that case, Arthur would have taken two damage. So actually wrong dial. Uh, I would put Arthur here from eighteen down to 16. And once he, of course, he hits zero, uh, he's dead, and then the other player wins. That's how combat works, and uh, that's it. The board is also double-sided, which is actually really nice because it, uh, it, it, it really matters because it plays very, very differently. This is more of a straightforward type of board with like two bridges, and it's, you know, a ship kind of docking at land, and so the, the colors actually represent the, the terrain that you're uh, uh, on. But if we flip this board over, now we have a castle. And this is a very, very interesting, and it plays very, very different than the other one. You've got these towers here, which um, you know represent all of the colors that are in here. So if you're able to get on one of the towers, you have range over so many other places. But there's very few places to get. Like you can't just climb up. Uh, you know, so if Medusa is up here, uh, Arthur could be right here and still not be adjacent to her. And right here, and he he can't get to her. So he's got to go all the way around over here and climb up the castle to get to her. So like. Here's a board that could really favor ranged characters. So, like, it's it's nice that uh, you know that the, the double sides uh, boards are so very different. Um, that uh, this one, you know, with its narrow bridges and stuff, can potentially favor melee characters a little bit more, uh, or at least be a little bit more balanced. But I, I like the the difference between the the boards. Let's talk about some of the different fighters too. So first off, we talked about Medusa a little bit. She's a ranged uh, attacker, so that is certainly a big advantage that she's got. Also, if people try to get close to her, she can deal damage to somebody in her zone. So if you start out uh, at the start of her turn, when you're in her zone, she can do a free damage to you. Uh, she also has three harpies, uh, which she, she could be used to kind of block off approaches to her. Um, and uh, she has a lot of ranged attack cards. Uh, also, her, her stone, uh, gaze of stone is very strong. Uh, she can... She can do uh, a lot of interesting things. Uh, man, she's got a lot of those gazes of stone. So she's kind of playing a little bit of a, a bluff game. Um, also, 
uh, some characters have the ability to boost attacks. And so if you wanted to be able to, during combat, you could boost an attack. So you're going to be using that boost value of another card, kind of like you would with movement. But this time you can do that for an attack and make an attack even stronger. So uh, there are certain cards that a lot that a lot of characters will have, um, which is interesting because there's a lot of characters that have like a faint card, which will cancel all the text on another one, another character. So there's certain things that are uh, like here and here's her example of that. Right? This is an any card that's going to cancel effects. So there's certain types of cards that are common to just about all of the decks, but also different things that are unique. So Arthur has Merlin, and he has only one sidekick, but Merlin's kind of powerful. Merlin's got seven hit points. Um, Marth Arthur's value is only two, and uh, while Arthur is melee, Merlin is actually ranged. So his, his sidekick can do the ranged attacks, which is kind of cool. It's a little, little bit of a change up. But Merl, uh, Arthur rather has the ability to boost his attacks, which he can boost all of his attacks, which means he's also going to run out of cards very fast if he does that. But he can, if he gets into melee, he can hit you very, very hard. Um, he has a lot of high attack cards. He's also got an Excalibur card, which I think can attack for six in here. So it's uh, he's very there. We go. There it is. And of course, he's got cards that let him search for that, and he's got. Um, you know, there's some Merlin stuff. This Merlin kind of is his way to draw extra cards also. Uh, so you kind of want to keep uh, Arthur alive, or Merlin alive if you can, to kind of help feeding cards to uh, Arthur, as well as giving him that ranged attack. Sinbad and the Porter, who is his uh, sidekick. Uh, Sinbad is going to start off with 15 health, and the Porter starts off with 6. Now, they are both melee. Uh, and Sinbad has Voyage cards, and we'll look at a few of those, but he kind of ramps up. I, I, I kind of think of Sinbad as somebody who kind of starts out a little bit slower, uh, but gets stronger and stronger as the game progresses, which can make him very deadly in a multiplayer game if he gets ignored and gets a chance to get a lot of uh, Voyage cards in his discard pile. So like he's got Voyage Home, uh, and a lot of these, a lot of his Voyage cards tend to uh, take advantage of the more Voyage cards you have in your discard pile, the stronger they become. And that's, uh, you know, he, he's got a lot of Voyage to the City of uh, the King of Serendib, Voyage to the Valley of the uh, Giant Snakes. You know, he, and not all of his cards are Voyages. You know, you, the Porter's there to help you draw more cards and to try to get those Voyages uh, into your uh, into your discard pile. But uh, but he has a lot of attack. He's melee. Um, but and then again, his treasure cards again, drawing three cards for one card. That's uh, of course, if you are going to scheme with a card like that. Um, but he's got some, he's, you know, he's definitely got some melee attacks. And, uh, you know, he's got a lot of the momentum shift cards. And the, oh, there are a lot of characters that have these. And this basically, if you move and attack, you're, it's going to count as a five instead of a three. Uh, you'll see these in a lot of uh, decks as well. But as a melee character, he's going to rely heavily on attacks kind of like that. Like the Alice you know from Alice in Wonderland. But we do have Alice here with a giant blade. Uh, and she comes with her trusty sidekick, the Jabberwock. Uh, Alice starts out with only 13 health, but the Jabberwock starts out with 8. So a little bit less health for the hero, uh, but more health for the for the companion there. They are also both melee. And Alice has a, a special little key uh, that is either small on one side and big on the other and this allows her to actually have a really interesting play style uh, because on her card here you're going to choose if she's small or big at the beginning of the game and when she's big uh, you add two to the value of all of her attack cards when she's small you add one to the value of all of her defense cards and that's actually a big uh, factor into this because a lot of her cards are going to have you change size like uh, the eat me card <laughs> which is uh, move Alice up to three spaces and change size and there's certain things if she's big, if she's small, and it's going to be referenced a lot. Her size is going to be referenced on a lot of different cards. Uh, like you can attack. Uh, this would make that actually up to, that would make that five if you were big. And then after combat, move Alice and change sizes. So you can attack and then immediately switch into your defensive size. So mastering the size change would be very important for her. Um, and she's also got really great defensive cards like, like Looking Glass, which you can actually recover health, which helps make up for her low starting health. I also have to give a huge, huge props to the insert on, on this game. It's absolutely spectacular. It just makes it so easy to just grab your character, grab their deck, 
Um, underneath the decks, and they're easy to reach in here too, because look, I just, you stick your finger there, pull the whole deck out. You've got, oh, you've got the dial underneath there, and the dials are all underneath there. You got all the companions right here. If they have, if they have multiple dials, the smaller dials underneath that. So it's just, it's really easy to grab what you need and start playing. There's like virtually no setup time. You get this game set up in 20 seconds or less. It's absolutely fantastic. So, uh, and again, this is Battle of Legends Volume 1 from the Unmatched system. Well, we've got some more to take a look at also. We also have the Bruce Lee expansion. This is not a standalone expansion. This is just a single miniature. Uh, so you, you know, obviously cannot play this. It's not a complete game. But we've got our Bruce Lee miniature here, which is magnificent. And you've got the gold uh, oh, I love the gold ring around the base. Um, really nice artwork on his dial as well. Bruce starts out with 14 health, so he's also a little bit lighter on the health pool. Um, now, he also does not have a sidekick, and so I think Bruce Lee is a good character for once you're experienced with the game a little bit because uh, he, you know, I, I lost with him my first time trying to play uh, because, well, I just wasn't prepared for the amount of damage uh, and also some of the uh, finer strategies of his play style. Now, uh, he does have at the end of your turn, you may move Bruce Lee one space. This is especially good if you're fighting somebody and you want to spend all of your actions to attack, but then you're right next to somebody and they might counterattack you with your lower health pool. You can just step back and force them to have to spend an action to try to move uh, back into melee combat with you. Uh, so that much is really nice. Now, uh, Bruce has a lot of uh, the standard types of cards like Faint. I was talking about that some more. Uh, and he also has uh, what was Momentum Shift. If you know, if you move and attack, you're going to get that. So he's got a lot of those melee cards. Uh, another advantage is you don't have any sidekick cards. So you're never going to get a card that you can't use. Uh, so that much is really nice. But uh, the, the big thing about Bruce is that he's got uh, Jeet Kune Do cards. And these are unique in that they're going to gain you an extra action. Now, this is a big deal because you only have two actions. So if you wanted to, uh, you know, move up to somebody and then attack, and you attack with a Jeet Kune Do card, you know, I mean, you know they don't, maybe they don't defend, maybe they do defend. But either way, you are going to, look, and it cancels all effects on your opponent's card. So they can't even stop this, right? This with this, with this particular one. But all, just about all of them give you the gain one action. Um, and, you, and you're just and you're going to keep going. You can you can you know if you have enough of these in your hand, uh, you can attack multiple times in a single round, uh, and and potentially you know take somebody all, almost all the way down. So it's you know he has devastating you know, boom, 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 you know if you can really do it. Pardon the sound effects. And of course, as somebody who's got uh, lightsaber nunchucks like all over the place is my favorite thing. You know I'm a big nunchuck fan. Of course, Bruce Lee has the nunchaku. Uh, and if you were to like, if you started your uh, your turn in in melee range of somebody, in theory, you could play this first. All of your attacks gain plus one value, and then play a couple of Jeet Kune Do cards, and uh, you just be good to go. Like that's just insane. Plus, he can get Jeet Kune Do cards back from his discard pile back into his hand, and uh, so he's like he's got a lot of. Uh, a lot of potential if he can get the right cards. So that's uh, kind of the cool thing about Bruce Lee. Plus, he's Bruce Lee. He's got nunchucks. He's just he's the, he's the best. So, big fan of this one. And the last set I want to show you is Robin Hood versus Bigfoot. Now, this one is actually a standalone expansion because it does come with a board. Uh, now, this board can really only be used for two players because it's a slightly smaller board. Uh, but it is also double-sided. You've got uh, the Yukon on this side and you've got Sherwood forest on this side so uh you know and this one looks actually pretty cool so so these are uh, so these are nice and a lot again again if you're only playing two players this is all you need anyway because there's actually still a lot of spaces on here it's just a physically smaller board and it actually folds up into a like a tri-fold which is kind of cool you don't see a whole lot of boards that have the three-way fold so that's that much is pretty cool now in this pack we're going to get bigfoot who just looks awesome there's a lot of shading on here you may have seen my unboxing already. Uh, Bigfoot is going to come with the, the Jackalope, uh, and this is my, maybe my one criticism of of this box is that it doesn't have the uh, the ease of getting the cards that the other boxes have because they used to have this this indentation where you could just stick your finger in there and, and pull the whole deck out. 
but it's like you 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 don't kind of you kind of don't get them all quite so easily. Um, but okay, it takes a little bit of finesse to get it. Um, so Bigfoot is going to start with 16 health. He's got a, a good health pool. Jackalope has six. Um, and at the end of your turn, if there are no opposing fighters in Bigfoot's zone, you can draw a card. Uh, and he kind of plays where he wants to kind of be alone uh, or run away. Uh, but uh, but at the same time, when he gets really mad, he can he can hit you really hard. And that's kind of what he wants to kind of be in a zone by himself, which is harder to do in a two-player game. Um, but again, against Robin Hood, who's a ranged character, it might be a little bit more feasible because. Robin Hood's going to probably stay a little bit away from you. Uh, the Jackalope can move really, really far and then damage everybody. So if you can keep the Jackalope alive, he can kind of charge and go in there and do stuff. Um, but Bigfoot has, like, he's got really strong attacks. Look at this, larger than life with six attacks. So he's got very, very strong attacks. And he has a lot of movement abilities that can let him move through uh, opposing characters. But I think he'd be a lot of fun in a very crowded game, in a big multiplayer game. I think he can have a lot of fun with that. Uh, Robin Hood... Uh, on the other hand, it's going to be a little different. He's ranged, and he's got his uh, outlaws. I was going to say merry men, but uh, maybe they're not too merry in this game. But he's got three of those, and they're going to just have the one health each. Uh, Robin Hood is going to start with 13 health, so he doesn't get a whole lot. Uh, but after you attack, you may move your attacking fighter up to two uh, spaces so that much is uh, so he gets the uh, you know that whole range and then and then run away and hide um, so Robin Hood's got cards like defenders of Sherwood you know, uh, and this is for anybody who's defending um, and you can return defeated outlaws to any space in Robin Hood's zone and it's always nice to be able to return uh, you know dead uh, dead henchmen to your side um, you can steal from the rich uh, they can choose to discard a card if they do not uh, they, then you get to draw an extra card, so you're kind of forcing uh, opponents to discard. And while this is a two-player game, uh, it's nice that this is not, um, you know, restricted to only two players because these still are designed to work completely with the unmatched system and are still going to completely work with all the other stuff, so you can really mix and match if you have more of these. Uh, to have them all kind of work together on the bigger boards. All right, everybody. So that is Unmatched. I My final thoughts, I absolutely love, love this game. I think it's absolutely magnificent and uh, super quick to play. I mean, you know, 20 minutes tops. Like they say 20 to 40 minutes. I, I think I, I, it's even much quicker than that. I think. I think you're looking at like 15 minutes a game if you're both experienced. Uh, really quick, super fun because I, I, I absolutely love playing this. And as soon as the game is over, I'm like, all right, let's play again. I'm going to pick a different fighter this time. And so I love the expandability of this game and how they're going and tapping into all sorts of pop culture and mythology uh, from this. I, I, and I, there's more stuff coming out too. Jurassic Park is coming out too. And like, that sounds really, really exciting. Uh, especially, uh, you know, my friend Sean, who I play this with quite a bit, he's a big dinosaur fan. So, uh, you know, uh, Restoration Games, Mondo Games, if you're watching and you want to send me some of that Jurassic Park stuff, I would be thrilled to review that as well because I really, really enjoy this game. And I love that it's such a quick game to be able to play, but you have so much fun with it. And you can play multiple sessions of this in a single go around. I was a big fan of Star Wars Epic Duels, and I love the fact that you've kind of captured the magic of that without it having to be Star Trek. I also love that all the characters are very thematic. I, I, I love the components. I love the, uh, the colors that are applied to this game. It is so refined, uh, yet so quick of a game. I'm absolutely blown away by the production quality and the design for this game. I am absolutely in love with it, and this is going to be in probably one of my top 10 games of all time just because it's just so very very well done i am in love so that's my uh, that's my thoughts on unmatched uh let me know what you guys think in the comments section i am uh, blown away and also don't forget to enter to win that giveaway for the 25 dollars amazon gift card again if you're already a subscriber you're halfway there uh, just leave me a comment let me know what you think of unmatched all right guys that's all i've got for you today i want to thank you so much for watching, big thanks to Mondo Games and Restoration Games for sending this out. Uh, you have really uh, cheered uh, me up through this, uh, you know, this uh, this COVID nineteen stuff. So it was a real treat to be able to take a look at such a great game. Uh, I honestly wasn't sure if it was going to be that great or not, but I am blown away and I love it. Thank you so much, and as always, have a great day.